Welcome back to another video. I made something for my neighbor Rose across the street and I know she's really going to like it. So let's go show her. Hello. Oh crap. What? I didn't break nothing. You're always breaking something. Now you let me in. You got your camera on. I didn't. I don't need nothing fixed. <laughs> Did you check the mail? What do I look like? Your slave? Well, you come over. I always <laughs> check it for me. Well, there's a reason why I didn't check the mail today. Really? Yeah. Remember last time when I made yeah. the video and you helped me out with the sensor, the shock sensor? Yeah, yeah. The that door opens cool. and it makes yeah. a vibration. Yeah. And you liked that one so much. And you said, wow, that's a great idea. Everybody would love to have the mailbox Notify them when, when the postman drops off their packages and their mail. I get tired of going out there. Yeah, people run out, they're looking out the window, and they're, they're always wondering, is my check there? And they look at the neighbor's flag to see if the flag went down to let them know that the mail... Yeah. So I made something for you because I know you're going to love it. Now, the other one that I made that worked, the only problem with that, it wasn't designed specifically for a mailbox because it's a shock detection type of a circuit. And the problem is it's harder for the average person to put that circuit together. Okay. So they're not going to want to do it, most people. And it also draws power even though you're not using it. So if the mailbox door is closed, even with the door closed, the battery is going to drain down in a few days. Okay. So I wanted to give you something that you can use that's going to do the same job to notify you when the mail comes. You can also use it for like a shed door. It could be 200, 300 feet away from your house. If you're worried about having somebody break into your shed, then you could put what I made on the door on the inside. So if they cut off your padlock or cut chains yeah. and they open the door, it's going to alert you in your house. Oh, wow. Or you can use it on a mailbox. Oh, okay. So let me show you what it is. I took a regular doorbell. Oh, wow. This is a wireless doorbell and it's very inexpensive, 12 bucks. And over here is the transmitting unit. Oh, I like that. And you can see you can push the button, but I also added right over here, this is a magnet switch. So instead of worrying about the shock circuit, if it rains heavy and it's pinging on top of the mailbox yeah. and having your notification go off, what this is going to do is only if the door is opened and the magnets separate, oh. you're going to get notified in the house. So I'm getting that? Yeah, I'm doing it for you, because I'm a nice guy. So you won't be getting my email. <laughs> That's really the reason why I'm doing it, because I'm sick of getting your mail. <laughs> well, you know, there, it's been a few incidents, and I thought that was a great idea. Well, when you told me that you liked it for that purpose, oh, wow. and then I thought about it, and I said, you know what? I've done that. I'm waiting for an Amazon package, a padded envelope, yeah. and I keep looking outside, looking outside. It's a pain in the neck. So at least now, when the package comes, as soon as that door is opened, you're going to have a notification in the house. Oh, wow. And what's good is if somebody has like a two, three hundred foot long driveway or maybe a barn that they want to know if somebody opens the door, oh, you can use this because the range is really good on it. Oh, wow. Even farther than the last one? Oh, this, this will probably go 500 feet away oh, up to a thousand. Wow. Very far. Now, I have another question. Where the hell were you this morning? Oh, I decided to go shopping to Walmart early this morning. <laughs> and that was a bad mistake. Every Why? time I go, I used to go early all the time before this mess with the virus, you know, the yep. pandemic or whatever you want to call it. And so I felt pretty good and I thought, well, I'll go get it done. And then I get home early. I've got other things to do. So I went to Walmart. I had my list. I'm shopping and I told you I needed some drill bits. So oh, I for the trash can? Yeah, because... Because it was holding water. All right. Yeah. I could have given you the drill bit, but you wanted your own. Yeah, I like having my own stuff. All right. So anyway, I went shopping. I was in the aisle where they had the drills, the drill bits, and all the other goodies that I like. I was standing there, and I see this guy coming with a backpack on, and it cuts right in front of me. So anyway, he leans, he takes his backpack off. He leans down, and then he opens up his backpack, and he sticks an $80 <laughs> drill. And I'm thinking, man, I could use a drill. <laughs> but he's stealing it. I'm thinking, he puts it in, he zips it up. 
He walks right past me like I wasn't even there. <laughs> Thinking. This sounds like something that would go on at Walmart, especially the one down the street. I follow him, and he just keeps walking, and all of a sudden, I notice him noticing me following him. <laughs> but I wasn't about to lose him, because I'll be damned if he's walking out of this store with an $80 drill. Shh. So, <clears throat> couldn't find nobody in the back of the store. Why? That's where I was. Never can you find anybody in the back of the store. They're always... A Front. Well, now you know why they're stealing stuff from the back of the store. Yeah. I followed him up front, and I found the manager. I thought he was a man. Well, he was Somebody that looked like a manager you grabbed. Yeah, he was big, and I yeah. thought, well, he can take it. <laughs> so anyway, I looked up to him, and I said, sir, I said, that guy there, right there with the backpack, has an $80 drill in his backpack. And he says, well, how do you know? I said, well, I saw him do it. I was standing right there. What a, you know, I'm, I'm maybe an old lady. I'm not dead. I'm not dumb. And I'll be damned if somebody's walking out with an $80. True. I would like to have it. You know, I, so I just got upset because I paid for that. He said, you saw him. And I said, yes, I did. He said, well, who are you? And I said, I'm a customer. I call, okay, all right, I'll go check it out. I said, he took it, he's got it, and I want you to make sure. And he went over there and looked? He went over there, <clears throat> talked to the guy, he says, I want to see what's in your backpack. Shh. So he opens it up and pulls out. The drill. The drill. The guy told him that he was drunk. Yeah, I love that line, to get out of it. He wasn't drunk. I think he thought, I'm an old lady, what am I going to do? I said, where'd he go? He says, I kicked him out of the store. I said, you didn't call the cops? I would have called the cops. So he sent him out of the store. What happens next? So anyway, I had to go find my basket where I left it. All right. Back where the drill bit and everything was. I didn't even get my damn drill bits. Because you were so I was, out of whack from the I whole was, thing. I was yeah. whacked. Yeah. Yep. So I got my basket. I finished up my shopping. As I'm going forward, I see this guy. Hey, girl. And he looked like a homeless guy because of the way he was <laughs> dressed. He had the big baggy pants on and they were dirty. And he had a dirty shirt on. Shh. And he had five CDs in his hands. And I'm thinking. Oh, you're looking at him now. Yeah, I see yeah. him. And all of a sudden, I'm thinking, he don't look like he's got any money. <laughs> so anyway, I followed him. And he grabbed wow, you're a real, you're a real stalker. He walks and he grabs a loaf of bread. Doesn't even look at the bread. He just grabs a loaf of bread. And I followed him up in front. And I said, sir, sir, call the manager again. I said, sir, this guy just stuck five CDs in his pocket. Oh, my. Two in one day. And he says, who are you? To me again. The manager did. Who are you? You from another store? And I said, no. I just shop here. So... He said, sir, I want to check your pockets. And he didn't. He found the five CD. And I said, look, all I want to do is get out of here. Pay for my stuff and get out of here. You can't even go shopping because you're more interested in who's stealing stuff. <laughs> it's like they do it in front of me. It's, it's, like, like, it's like you're a magnet for it. Yeah. My daughter used to say, don't go back in the morning anymore because I was always telling her what was going on. That's what all the said, scumbags go on. You don't need that. <laughs> you don't need that, Mom. So I'm starting to do my checkout and I had two female employees come up to me and they said, we heard what you did. We thought that was pretty brave. Huh. And I said, no, it's just, you need to put people in the back. And she hands me a card and I said, I don't want that. What is that? And she says, it's from the manager. It's a gift for you for what you did. And I said, well, I really don't want it, you know. So she says, no, you have to take it. That's very nice of him. Yeah, it's very nice. I was shocked. I well, like... All the other times I was in that store and yeah. was pointing out and having security. Yeah. They never once gave me anything. <sighs> but I wasn't expecting anything, you know. Well, you're like me. You do it and you're not, you're not expecting anything no, for not. it. And it just happens. I just want them to do their job. I don't like <laughs> paying for somebody else stealing. Yeah, because it brings all the prices up. She said, are you all done? I said, yes. Yeah. She says... I'll slide it for you, and it was fifty dollars. That was nice. That was they nice. Took fifty dollars off of my bill. Yeah. And I said, "Well, that was really nice." She says, "No, what you did was really nice." <laughs> and I said, "Well, thank you, but I'm not coming back this early anymore." 
I don't blame you. I said, but you need to put somebody in the back. Um, All right, so now that that crazy story is, <laughs> is out of the way, I'm going to go put this on your mailbox. Okay. I'm going to set this up. I'm yeah, I'm going to set it all up for you. All right, right here. Hopefully the camera can see that. I can't wait till I get mail. Oh, yes, and you're not going to have to worry about it anymore. You'll be in the house watching TV, and you're going to hear the tone from this as soon as the mail's dropped oh, off. Oh, God. And I'm going to position this. This goes underneath the front of the mailbox. Okay. So you don't have to worry about it getting wet. Okay. And then this goes inside behind the door where you pull it open. I may have to adjust the door to make sure it opens and closes nicely okay. because these magnets have to line up. So before I go outside, I'm going to need rubbing alcohol and some paper towels. I got that. All right, get that and I'm gonna get ready. Okay. Okay, let me show you how I connected it up. If you look underneath, you can see where it's mounted. And if you look at the inside, right there is the switch and on the door. Very simple. Okay, we're all ready. Rose is going to make believe that she's getting the mail. I'll be able to see her through the window. And way over here by the coffee maker is the receiving unit. Okay, Rose, head on out. And there she goes. Perfect. And that worked great. So now anytime the postman drops off a package or a letter, you're going to be notified in your house. No more reason to run outside checking the mailbox every few minutes. That worked perfect. You're gonna love it. Good. Now the last thing I wanna do is just show you how easy it is to connect up the magnet switch to the transmitter. Take a digital multimeter and you're going to put it to the resistance setting to measure ohms. And if you happen to have a continuity alarm setting, you're going to choose that, and that's what I'm going to do. You can see the symbol over here, that's for sound. If you take the two probes and you touch them together, you can see the alarm sounded and it showed zero ohms. So what you need to do is take a look at the switch, the brown wire is common, and then you have a normally open and a normally closed wire. You're going to take the switch, and you're going to pull it apart from the magnet and you want to find out which one has continuity with the magnet not in position. And you can see it's not that one. So that is the one right there. If I push this back, this should now be off. And it is. So you can trim away or cut off this wire to get it out of the way. And you could take a little bit of silicone sealant once you cut it off and just apply it right on the back side of the switch to keep moisture out and then you're going to go on to the next step and you're going to take a small screwdriver a slot screwdriver you're going to position it downward and then you're going to pry up and it will pop right off let me flip this over to show you exactly where on this board to connect the two wires you can see this one only has the two wires the other one was trimmed off and I put some clear sealant right over where that wire connected. Pop out the battery. And it's a small Phillips, but I can get by using the small slot. Just go in there. Now the connection is going to be made on both sides of the switch. You're going to solder the wire after you strip it to one spot like you see here. And you're going to get the other wire and solder it to the top. That's all you have to do. It is extremely simple. As long as you have a 15 watt soldering iron along with a small diameter rosin core solder. I prefer 6040. It flows much better, but you can also use lead free. Let me screw this back in and connect the battery and then I want to show you one more thing. Make sure the battery goes back properly. The spring is the negative and you can see right over there it says positive that in. Now the wire is going to come out of the side and you can see there's a ridge around that plastic cover and it goes into this housing here. You want to make a small notch. You see that right there? 
and that's going to allow the wire to pass through and let the cover go down securely. So make sure you have that notch. You want to make sure this is positioned underneath the mailbox so it does not get wet. Use the double stick tape to secure it and then you can pass the sensor switch between the door as I showed you earlier. And guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.